Hi guys, it's my first live stream ever. Uh, I hope somebody joins to see me. No idea if you don't. I'm kind of going to focus on just workspace this time because, yeah. Can anybody hear me? No? Yay! Awesome. So I thought I would start with some kitty ears today because kitty ears are awesome. And I made a couple sets already. To work on sighting here. These ones need work, but I also gave them little extra bitty bits, which is fun. And these ones I actually preheated, and I have these cool little cup things to help them keep their shape because once foam is heated, cooled back down, it keeps its shape perfectly. My little ear bits. These ones I made were inner edge ones, so the next ones I'm going to make are going to be on the outer edge here. Like I said, I already used the cool little things, so these don't need to be redone because they're ready to go. I don't have my favorite tools today, so I am working with what I have. I have glue coming in the mail, so we'll have that soon, I hope. So normally I'd have this cute little squeezy bottle here, but I don't have my squeezy bottle because everything takes forever. So we're just going to use this because it'll be much easier. And then one of the best parts about spare foam is you can actually use it to make those seams nice and clean with the glue. But you need two layers of it. And it takes forever. Any thin line will get you much further because a thick line will take forever to dry. So that one is all set. It's just slightly wet and that's all it needs. And so now we'll do this side. I can't wait for my squeezy bottle and my better glue to be here because this is not my favorite glue. It's very stringy and it makes everything really hard to control because I get these little spider web bits everywhere. And if you want to go faster, that's really frustrating because then you have all these little spider web things everywhere. So for the pre-curled ones, these are a little more difficult. But if I wanted to glue it first and then heat it, the heat would actually reactivate the glue, which might not always be what you want to do. So nice thin line on the inside. And then just a piece of foam, because if I use a paintbrush, that paintbrush is now dead to the world because it can't do it again. The glue just hooks right onto it and just never lets go. This one. Another nice thin line. Ah, it was way too much glue. Ah, it's okay. We will just spread it a little further. Yee. Too much, too much. All right, and now we let those dry for sometimes up to five minutes and then do a second coat. But since that will take forever, I thought I would show a really cool trick with the heat gun, even though it's going to be a little noisy because you can do really cool extra designs on these before you heat gun it. So if you have a really cool exacto blade, I have several of them with various tips on them. And the cool thing is you don't have to do a lot to just lightly score them. And whatever pattern you do, just make sure you want it because it's in there kind of forever. But you can imagine if I had like a Dremel or a soldering iron, I could do some pretty intricate stuff on this, which I'm just doing wavy lines for right now. And wavy lines are totally fine. Nothing wrong with wavy lines. But if you can see that? I don't know if you can. You can barely see the lines that I did. They're super light. 
but then you take El Senor Heat Gun. Make sure you put that in a very safe location because that tip is burning hot. And now you got all these cool little things on here that seemingly paired from nowhere. And then you can bend your piece to do it whatever you want and stick it in something to hold that shape. Ta-da! And that's how I left those other ones the other night. Make sure your tips are even, of course. If you want to ever hold something after you heat it, you can have to do a cool little foldy bits that hold their shape really well. The first project I ever did with helmets, I didn't have a proper heat gun. So I actually just sat there and would knead it for probably about 10 minutes a piece at a time until it decided it was going to hold that shape for me to then finally glue it in shape. There we go. It's got a cute little Scottish fold to it now. But now we can do our next line on the other pieces. Do, 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 little line. Ah. Like I said, this is not perfect and I can't wait for my other glue to be here. But for the moment, we will make do with what we got because that's what you do during quarantine. You make do with what you got. I have been pretty lucky to get my hands on the things that I've gotten my hands on. And a lot of that is because Excelsior Comics and Games was lending me some of their things while they were not using them. Kind of like the heat gun because it took about a month for my heat gun to get here. But now it's here and I can give them back theirs and now I have all the cool little tip attachments to do neat things with. How's everybody doing today? Any questions for any random thing? Doesn't have to be foam related. It can be latex related or anything like that. Hopefully everyone is still hearing me good. And yeah, cause funsies. Yeah. Yay. Drink my ever present coffee. Cause that's what we do. My happy go juice. What kind of glue? This is not the glue that I like. I prefer Barge's Universal, but for right now, I'm using Barge's All Purpose Cement, which does do the trick. It's just really, really sticky. And like I said, it's spider webs everywhere. And it dries really fast. But then sometimes it doesn't dry fast enough, so you can't quite judge what it's supposed to be doing sometimes. And this guy's actually completely dry now, or not dry, cool. And you can see it's holding that shape just perfectly. It's a little Scottish fold and everything. All right, let's see if those kitty ear things are dry. No, I can still see wetness. Never mind. On the topic of these cool little ball things, I have them in a lot of shapes and sizes because you never quite know what size you're going to need to do something. This one is perfect for large shape things, you know, big things. I actually didn't realize that the ears were going to fit so perfectly in this one for set. So that was a nice discovery because I was kind of wrapping them around it and just holding it. And I really don't like idle time. <laughs> so I was getting really bored. And then I would let them go too soon and they would unfold and it would get really, really frustrating. I should probably put that one back in because it's not really done yet. But you can't order just one of these. So I have about 24 of these, probably 10 of each of these in every size because why would I just have one? Because really they're Christmas ornaments and you're supposed to hook them together and stuff, which... These are both any pieces instead of around pieces, so I don't think that would actually work. But I'm not going to use them as Christmas bulbs, so I guess that doesn't really matter.
All right, let's give these bad boys another try. So these ones are nice and done. Open this up and see. I don't know if you can see all the spider webbing on this, but it's pretty terrible. Thankfully, that goes away. My ear bits are cut at a slight angle so that it's going to fit in here very nicely. Just hook that right there. And voila, beautiful little kitty ear. And that just has to dry for a little while. Then I can dremel off the rough edges and I can hot glue it to just about anything. Still gotta press it down for a little while though. If I was using latex, the seam would be flat-ish. I could use my roller, but these curved Foamy bits really don't lay flat like ever. So we can't do that. And there we go, that one's pretty. So once this is fully dried and sanded and then primed, can actually like go in and put like little tufts of fur here and paint and then just glue them right onto a headband, which will be super cute. On to the next one. So that's in now. That one went together actually much easier. Sometimes it just happens. My finger is a little sore today for doing stuff because I managed to almost break my finger yesterday in the stand mixer. Not sure exactly how it got left on, but I went to go put the spinny bits in it and it was already on and my fingers were inside of it. So thank goodness my fingers are double jointed. They continue to bend and I managed to get myself out. But this one is really, really sore on the knuckle here. Thankfully that was all the damage that happened. I swore a little bit, the dog got overexcited and tried to like make me feel better. And there we go. Two adorable little kitty ears. Actually, probably go that way. Yeah, probably that way. I'm gonna do something about the backlight under here. I'm gonna go turn my other light on. Yeah, I don't think that did much to help. How do I get the seam so perfect? Well, that's a lot of trial and error. And there's a bunch of discarded pieces over on my cutting mat from when I put things together, drew new lines and chopped things up. And then it's just patience. Because, yeah, I got these pretty darn close to what they should be. It's like a little tiny overlap on this one, but that's what the Dremel is for. But this is actually the outer version, and there's actually a curvier version of the earpieces, which I can do next. Yeah, if I get the other one done. Let's see. Oh, there's the other one I scored. All right, so let's... So I have an edge cut on this one. I don't think you guys can see the fact that there's a 
45 degree angle there, but I actually like to curve it on the inside because I think it wraps around the ears a little bit better. Let's stick those in there, which means all of those cool little weavies I did are actually gonna be on the side or the inside, but that's okay. You'll either barely see them or they'll look really cool and someone will do awesome. Keith, did I use calculus? No, I did not use calculus. I used a ton of trial and error, which is how I do most things. And you get some pretty cool results that way, as long as you are not afraid of failure, because you can fail like a bunch. But failure isn't really failure, it's learning new things because we'd never learn anything if people didn't try new things. Really like the Scottish fold on those ears, so I'm trying to keep that with these ones. There we go. Little curve there on both of them. Those would be really cute. But they need to set first before I can do anything with them. These guys, on the other hand, are like good to go. I could throw some primer on them without even doing much to finish them up, but I will do more to finish them up because they could use a little bit more. But we'll put those over there because those are done. So let's see. I'll save those off for later. So what should I do next? I have a gas mask. I've got some horns. Got another Plague Doctor mask. Any thoughts? Dealer's choice. Ah, I love coffee. <laughs> hmm, let's do the new gas mask because everybody needs PPEs right now. So this one is a couple pieces. So that'll be fun. Might have to look up how that one goes together. I don't think I remember off the top of my head anymore. Maybe a different one. My play doctor mask. Gas mask with horns. Um, I can put horns on the plague doctor mask. That's completely possible. Let's do that. So I have a bunch of pieces that started off as patterns that somebody else did that I then modified to be patterns that I liked how they went together. Because modification is how we find fun new things. Put those ears over there, out of the way. This is our underpiece, over eyes, nose, and both of our little facey bits. And these are also cut at a nice 45 degree angle which you have to make sure I always flip my patterns because I'm always afraid I'm going to forget that I have to do an opposite angle. So this way I never have to worry about doing an opposite angle because it's perfect the way it is. So we're going to start with lots of glue. So much glue. 